here with another question from the question bank in topic 10.2. We're looking at a, a gravitational potential graph, so how potential varies with distance. It says the graph below shows the variation with distance r from the center of a planet of the gravitational potential v. The radius of the planet is 5 times 10 to the 6th meters. That would be 0.5 times 10 to the 7th meters. So the radius of the planet starts at the beginning of the graph. The graph doesn't start from zero. Values of V are not shown for values of radius less than the radius of the planet. Because the graph changes shape there. It, it, it doesn't follow the patterns that we're familiar with once you enter the surface of the planet. The first part says to use the graph to determine the magnitude of the gravitational field strength at the surface of the planet. Now our first instinct, whenever we get one of these potential distance graphs, is to go with the fact that gravitational field strength is negative potential gradient. That would mean getting the slope, the change in potential with distance. But in this case, they're asking for the gravitational field strength at the surface of the planet, which on this graph is here. And getting that slope is going to be a risky proposition. You probably could do it, and you probably could get the right answer. But because the graph kind of ends there, it's going to be hard to draw an accurate tangent, um, which means you're sort of opening yourself up to uh, a little bit more error than you need to. And you may accidentally do the right process and get the wrong answer if you are not very accurate with your tangent at that point. So actually, in this case, we can take advantage of another property of the graph. This uh, works any time you have just one mass setting up the field. So it wouldn't work in a question where you had a planet and a moon or something like that, but if you have just one mass, we can also say that the gravitational field strength is the value of the potential divided by the value of the distance to the center of the planet. Uh, this is sort of an interesting property of the shape of the graph. This is a one on X or a one on R. Uh, type of graph, and I'll, I'll roughly sketch it out to you now. If that's a tangent, then the negative of the tangent looks something like that, which goes through the origin, zero, which is not shown on the graph. What that means is that v take 0 on r take 0 is the negative gradient of the graph. So the value of the graph, the value of the potential divided by the value of the resistance is the same as the negative potential. So the negative, or sorry, the negative potential gradient. The negative potential gradient is the same as the value of the potential divided by the value of the separation to the center of the planet. This only works if you have that one on R curve, and that only happens when you have only one mass in the field. But we'll take advantage of that in this case, because we can, and because it's going to get us a more accurate answer. That means that the magnitude of the gravitational field strength, so we don't need to worry about negatives because it's the magnitude, is just the value of the potential at this point divided by the separation. I read the value to be about negative 3.8, times 10 to the seventh. And don't miss that right there. And I read the value of the radius to be 0 0.5 times 10 to the seventh. Now because we're looking for the magnitude, we can ignore any negative signs and just get the value, the magnitude. Um, divide 3.8 by 5 and we get about 7.6 meters per second squared for the gravitational field strength. All right, moving on to the next part. A satellite with a mass of 3.2 times 10 to the third kilograms is launched from the surface of the planet. Use the graph to determine the minimum launch speed that the satellite must have in order to reach a height of 2.0 times 10 to the seventh meters above the surface of the planet. Uh, it says that you can assume that it reaches the maximum speed immediately after launch, so we're talking about projectile motion. Um, the other thing that it doesn't say we can assume, but we can also assume, 
is that it's not orbiting. It's going straight up. There's no rotation, no movement to the side. We don't need to worry about circular motion. We don't need to worry about other components of motion. We're just going straight up. There's a really tricky part of this question that I missed the first time, and that's that the height that we're trying to reach is 2.0 times 10 to the 7 meters above the surface of the planet. The surface of the planet is right here at 0.5 times 10 to the 7th meters. So if we want to go 2 times 10 to the 7th meters above the surface, that actually takes us to 2.5 times 10 to the 7th meters. So we're trying to reach this point. All right. Now that we know that, we can talk about how we might try and solve it. We're basically going to use a conservation of energy approach. We're using projectile motion to, to launch the satellite up, straight up. So the kinetic energy that it needs to start with has to be equal to the gravitational potential energy that it gains. The kinetic energy that it needs to start with, we can uh, calculate as uh, 1 half mv squared. And the potential energy that it gains, we can calculate by the change in potential times the mass of the satellite. Because remember, potential is energy or work done per unit mass. Multiply that by the mass of the satellite, and we get the change in energy of the satellite. So we need to find that change in uh, potential. Before we do that, right off the bat, I noticed that m's cancel. So even though I'm given the mass of the satellite, I don't actually need to use it. It's a red herring. You could use it. You could use it. It would be uh, the long way around solving the problem. But it's not necessary information, and in another question, they might not have given it to you. But we can solve for that velocity now. It'll be the square root of 2 times the change in potential. So that's all we need to know, the change in potential. The change in potential, we can calculate as the final potential, take the initial potential. And we'll get those two from the graph. The final potential I read to be about negative 0 0.8 times 10 to the 7th. And the initial potential we already read as negative 3.8 times 10 to the 7th. We'll use those two values here. Zero, negative 0 0.8 times 10 to the 7th take negative 3.8 times 10 to the 7th. Take a negative is the same thing as adding, so that's a total of 3 times 10 to the 7th. Coming back over here, that means our velocity is the square root of 2 times 3 times 10 to the 7th. And when you punch that in your, into your calculator, you get about 7.8 times 10 to the third meters per second.